have faith while in the process. We can call it have faith while in the process part two, if you like. In that first message, one of the points I talked about was having confidence. And I define confidence as faith in action. Faith in action. And we came from Philippians chapter one, verse six. And we can turn there for me, please. Philippians one and six. Confidence. Faith in action. Philippians chapter one, verse six. Do we have it? Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. When I looked at that scripture and as I was looking at the word being confident and in my definition, confidence is faith in action. And when I began to take it apart on how would be the best way to give good examples of confidence in something or what would be a good way to express the confidence that is talking about in this scripture. And one of the ideas that came to mind was for a person to have confidence in something, the thing or person that they are to have confidence in must have a resume or must have credentials that support them having the ability to carry out what we're having confidence for. Amen. Amen. For us to have confidence, whatever we are having confidence in must have the resume, the ability, or prior knowledge of that gives us the confidence in them. Come on now, that's my best Bill Johnson look. In the, in the verse, it ends with, until the day of Jesus Christ. And we know that the verse was ad- identifying Jesus as the individual, as the one for us to be confident in. That Jesus met all of the qualifications for us to have the confidence in him that he will complete the work that he began in us. That he will perform completion. And that he has the authority, the identity, and the qualifications to complete it. So let's look at some of his qualifications. First of all, Jesus was born a virgin birth. Jesus healed the sick. Only Jesus raised the dead. Jesus, in his life, cast out demons. Jesus called unto him disciples, and only Jesus was crucified on a cross for our sins. Jesus. And only Jesus was risen from the dead now in glory and is on his throne. Only Jesus. So with those qualities Jesus qualifies for us to have confidence in him. Can I get amen? 
not only did he qualify in his life, the name Jesus, even in his name, there's qualities. In the name Jesus, there's power. Anyone know about that power? In the name of Jesus, situations have to change. Jesus, let me talk about his name for a minute. Not only is he, he's called Jesus, he has other names. He's also known as the firstborn over all creation. He's also known as the Holy One. He's also known as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They even say that he is the light of the world. He's the Son of God. He's the great I Am. Jesus. He's the Lord of all. I, I read somewhere that Jesus is the bread of life. He's our deliverer. He is a good shepherd. Jesus, the Lamb of God. He's a rock. He's a resurrection. He's a life. Jesus, Alpha and Omega. His name qualifies him to complete the task in Philippians. Jesus is all these things to us. Can you identify with that? He's all these things to us. But as I was studying, one of the things that I came across in my studying, and as I was getting excited about Jesus and all the great things he is to me and all the great things that he is to us and the impact that he has on a life that has changed. I notice in many of the situations in the Bible involving Jesus changing someone's life, one of the truths that came out was the fact that without faith, it is impossible to please him. Can somebody say that with me? Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. And that's in Hebrews 11 and 6. It takes faith in Jesus to please him. It takes faith. He has all the ability to carry out his plan for our life. He has, through his father, already predestined our outcome. The process that we go through in life by faith, we accomplish his will for us. For even in the process, it takes faith to complete his plan. He's all those great things to us and for us. But it takes faith in him to please him. Can I get amen? amen? 
The word says, for he that cometh to God must believe he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Diligently seek him. I've been asked a question before. Well, if, if I, I believe God and I believe his word and, 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 and I'm trying uh, to live out his word and, I, and I'm trying to understand God. But sometimes, you know, I fall or, or, or sometimes, you know, I trip or, or sometimes, you know, I have certain sins that, you know, that, that just continually grip in my life. But I, I'm trying to believe God and, and I'm, I, I, I'm just to the point that I don't think that it's possible. The word says. He is, he is, and that he is a rewarder. He is, is what the word says. He is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I believe the word diligence in that scripture is there to, to give us a clear understanding of the fight, the battle, the temptation, the overcoming is all a part of diligently seeking him. It's in diligence that the, the victory is won. It's in your diligence. It's in your diligence. So if a person has accepted him and know his word, and is diligently seeking him through his word, understanding his presence, turning over things in his life to him, diligently releasing I believe it's very difficult. I believe it's impossible. I'm going to go as far as impossible. For a person that is diligently seeking him to take their life. I believe it's impossible. I believe a person that is diligently seeking him, a person that knows him, that understands his word, understands the value of their life and understands that God has a plan and a purpose for their life. And understand no matter what situation you're faced with in life, you can overcome it by what? The name of Jesus. So how can you take your life? When you understand whose life, when you understand who you belong to. Grace <laughs> Grace helps us to understand that through his love for us, his intention for us is to be righteous before him. Do I have to say that again? Grace. So we don't get it confused. Grace is intention by him for us intentionally. For us to know him and to love him and to understand his love for us. Therefore, I'm going to add a little bit to it. Our sins are forgiven us to put us in a position with him. Because with your sin, you can't be in a position with him. That's what grace is for. It's not a pass. It's not an excuse. It is his method of positioning us in his righteousness. He chose to use grace to position us. Now, repentance 
Repentance was set up to help us acknowledge our sin, his glory, and position ourselves according to his righteousness. Repentance is set up for us. Does that make sense? I like this right here. So I don't confuse repentance with grace. I don't confuse repentance with grace because repenting is a mind that has realized that what I'm doing is contrary to his plan for me. I repent for what I did because I don't want to do that no more. Because now I understand that hinders me, right? Grace answers me when I repent. I'm going to do Bill Johnson again. <laughs> Grace. Man, isn't that powerful? Grace is the answer to me repenting. That's what Grace does. And his answer to me is that I don't even remember. I take it away from you. Whoo! I take it away from you. I take it away from you. But it takes faith. <laughs> Again, it takes faith in believing that he has the power to change your life. Can I get amen? amen. Faith requires a renewing of the mind. Faith requires. A renewing of the mind. Be not conformed to this world. For because it takes faith. For us to understand. And to see his movement. And to understand that we can move in him. And to understand that he dwells in us and to understand we can have our being in him. It takes faith because the world system is controlled by everything a person does to accomplish something. That's how the world works. You do a little bit for me, I do a little bit for you. You do this for me, I do this for you. You do this, you get this. You do this, you get this. You do this, you get this. That's the world system. Kingdom is, I want to pour out blessings upon you. All you have to do is receive them. I want to pour them out to you. All you have to do is receive them. All you have to do is receive them. Receive them. It takes a transformation, a renewing of the mind that by that renewing of the mind, we may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I believe what happens is a renewed mind that understands God's will, that understands God's purpose. A renewed mind that's diligently seeking after God. Even though we're here on earth, a renewed mind, we, experiences, we experience the promises of God, we experience the love of God, we experience the blessings of God. And by those experiences, we prove we prove what is good. How do we prove it? People see it performed in us. So we prove that it's right. 
How do I prove God is good? Because my lifestyle proves that God is good. This is a good example. I decided to bless someone one day. I I had a car. Car went bad. Car didn't work for me. So um, I thought thought the battery was bad. So I went to Walmart, bought a battery, put a brand new battery in the car. The car still didn't work. So it wasn't a battery. So come to find out the car had other issues. So I was sitting on an opportunity because in my possession was a battery. Now, understand a week prior, someone told me that they had a vehicle that they were doing work on, but all it needed was some paperwork and a battery. Okay, this is how we prove it. In my mind, I see a what? Seed. But of course, the world said to me, go refund that thing and get your money back. Because it had value. But a kingdom mind, because why? I'm diligently seeking him every day. And looking for opportunities to prove him. So a kingdom mind said, that's a seed. Sow that seed. But understand this. To get to that point of having a mindset to even think about sowing a seed, you first have to understand the art of giving into the kingdom. See, I believe if you are a tither and a seed sower, you set yourself up for the kingdom to constantly make opportunities for you to be blessed. Why do I believe that now? Because before that, I wasn't a tither, faithfully. And before this, I wasn't a seed sower, faithfully. So what I believe now is out of experience of tithing. Come on now. You can say amen. amen. What I believe now is out of experience built up of sowing seeds. So the battery was a seed that I sold to someone. I sold a seed. In return, come on now. <laughs> the blessing showed up in the form of a car. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. The blessing showed up in the form of a car. That's how the blessings show up. The kingdom work. By blessing us. We prove who he is by being blessed. Because people are eyewitnesses of your blessing. It's people that know me before now and see me now and say, yeah, 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 something happened. (laughs) Something happened in him. I know God is real when I see you. I know God is real when I see me. You know God is real when you see yourself. I'm talking about from the inside out. I got that from a real. I had to use that one. From the inside out. You know he's real. Can I get amen? All right, let me wrap this up. So faith. It requires faith, for it is by faith, and without faith, it's impossible to please him. We must live by faith because the boundaries of the process is unknown to man, but the purpose is revealed in Jesus. Like I said before, we are in a process, but the boundaries... The limits on the process, we don't know. We don't know the boundaries of the process. 
We are in the process. The boundaries are not known to us. You don't know what he may do in you, for you, or through you next. But you know it's good. So in the process, we know that his plan for us is good while we're in the process. Because sometimes situations while in the process can get a little rough. Can I get amen? amen. See, sometimes in the process, sickness may come in. Sometimes in the process, Stress may come in. Sometimes in the process, people may come in. Sometimes in the process, financial strains may come in. Sometimes in the process, Pharisees and Sadducees <laughs> may come in. But when you understand that the process and the purpose of the process is to get you to the full completion of his plan and his purpose for your life. And you believe and have faith in his ability to carry you through the process. It's only a process. It's only a process. Can I get an amen? All things work together for the good of those who love God. Somebody say that again. All things for those who love God. The process requires faith through a renewed mind that counsels out doubt. A renewed mind that counsels out doubt. There was a story in the Bible of a ruler whose um, his daughter had died. And this is doing Jesus's ministry and Jesus is healing and 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 in the midst of his ministry. And this ruler um, knew that Jesus had the ability to raise his daughter from the dead. Now, nowhere in the Bible does it tells us how that ruler knew these things about Jesus. Nowhere in the Bible had I read that that ruler was present with Jesus when he raised someone else from the dead. Uh, nowhere had I read that um, one of the disciples had went to that ruler and told him about Jesus. The scripture just said that this ruler, his daughter, was dead. And he went to Jesus and said, if you will come and just lay your hands on her, she'll live. So I was just, I'm just assuming that Maybe this ruler had heard about Jesus through someone else. Maybe someone else had been healed by Jesus and they proved that by going to this ruler and saying, he healed me. Maybe someone was blind and, 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 and Jesus had gave them sight and, and his ruler may have known them and said, wait a minute, that person was blind, but their sight proved to that ruler that Jesus, what, can heal. He has power. So the story says that Jesus was in the press. He was in the multitude when this ruler came to him about his daughter. So as Jesus is on his way to this ruler's daughter, in the midst of the crowd, the Bible said there was a lady with what? An issue of blood. This lady had an issue of blood. And I believe that this Lady had either heard about Jesus, witnessed Jesus, or knew something about Jesus' credentials. Because the word said, all she did is reached out and touched, come on, the hem of his garment. She knew that not just by just, just touching the hem of his garment that she would be healed. Something about his life was proven to her as the ability to heal her. Something about Jesus' life was proven to her as the ability to heal her. 
We have to look at Jesus' life as proof in the ability to take care of our every need. He has proven that he can heal us. He has proven that he can take care of our every concern. The proof is in his life. Can I get amen? amen. Another illustration was P Peter. I looked at the story of Peter when he was on the ship. <laughs> <laughs> Peter was one of the disciples. Peter had proven knowledge of Jesus' ability because he was with him as a disciple. In the story, Peter is on a boat with Jesus. And the story says that a storm arose. Have you ever had a storm in your life rise up? Do sometimes the situations look like or feel like it may be a storm going on? Well, now we have a disciple with Jesus in the midst of the storm. And the word said that they became afraid for their life. But Jesus come. The storm. I'm just jumping ahead. I want to paraphrase. He, he calmed the storm. So therefore, Peter had proof from that experience. See, proof from things that you have experienced in God is what's going to help you get through situations that you are faced with today. Sometimes you have to go back and look back on other things that God has done. And apply them to your situations today. Because if he did it for me then, he would do it for me what? Again. If he did it for you, I know he can do it for what? He can do it for me. Let me talk about Peter for a minute. He was a disciple. He had witnessed Jesus come in the storm. Peter not only was with Jesus when he calmed the storm, Peter witnessed Jesus healing the blind. Peter was with Jesus when he fed the 5,000. Peter was with Jesus when he cast out the demons into the swine. Peter was with Jesus when he healed his mother-in-law. So therefore, Peter had Ample proof of Jesus' ability. Now, I find in the story in Matthew chapter 14 and 22. There's another example of Jesus with Peter in a storm. Jesus commands them to go to the other side. Come on, y'all know the story. While he went up into a mountain to pray. And, and while in the ship, another storm arose. As I was reading this and I was thinking about Peter and I was like, you know, he's a disciple and he's going through all these things and he's witnessing these great things happening. And he's seeing God healing and, and blind eyes being sight, being brought to the blind and, and the, the dead being risen. And and I'm, he's walking with Jesus, he's a disciple with Jesus, but yet and still, Peter is in a process. He finds himself in a process. I started thinking, maybe I can try to possibly give an illustration of what might have been going on in Peter's mind while in the process. Peter, this is going to be my ship. Peter is riding along in a ship. And the storm began to rise. The wind is now blowing. And I'm thinking that Peter is probably thinking about all the time I done been with Jesus. I'm thinking about Peter is thinking about 
all the things that I've seen Jesus do. I'm thinking Peter probably looking at all the times that Jesus has healed someone. Uh, Jesus has raised someone from the dead. And now in the process, Peter finds himself in a storm. And the wind is blowing and rocking. And Jesus is nowhere to be seen. And I wonder in my mind that maybe Peter was thinking to himself, I can't believe I'm in this ship. I can't believe I'm going through this ship. How did I get myself in this ship? I don't see Jesus nowhere, but I think I'm, I, I might have to lose my life behind this ship. Jesus, get me out of this ship. I can imagine Peter while in the process. Then experience all the wonderful things. Then been an eyewitness to all of his greatness. And now you are a disciple of his. But yet and still you in the process. But one of the most remarkable things to me about Peter was when he cried out for Jesus and he looked and see him what he was doing walking on the water. Peter registered in himself that I have the ability to do the same thing that Jesus is doing. Even though I'm in the process, even though I'm in the storm, as long as I can see Jesus, I know I have ability. Let the storms come. Let the winds blow. His name is is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. When we identify with his name and we identify with his plan and his purpose for our life, we have the faith. We have the faith to go through the process because in the process he is making us into his perfect plan the process is your making the process is your building the process is your training it's not to defeat you but it's to build you and to prepare you for his perfect plan. Can I get amen? Amen, amen again. Amen. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. Have faith. In God. No matter the situation. No matter the challenge, have faith in God.